sorry, you just caught me in the middle of some last minute preparations. And this is a good example of how much I enjoy the holidays. It's just all about giving. And people forget sometimes that it's not just the presents we're talking about. We're giving memories, experiences, and even introductions to people who, you know, will be a part of your lives for many years to come. You know, someone new comes over for the holidays and suddenly, oh, you're with that person? I might be seeing you for a lot more Christmases. So, in the spirit of meeting someone new who may change your life, let me talk about a man named Joss Whedon. He's an entertainer who's been in the game of film and television since the late 80s, technically. He did some work on Roseanne, as well as some ghostwriting on movies like Twister and even the first X-Men film. He's had a lot of influence on all of the work that we've come to know and love. From the small examples I've listed, that may seem like a stretch, but he also helped co-write the script for Toy Story. Oh yeah, he's got his hand into Disney, too in more ways than some people realize. You see, there's this little film called The Avengers. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but this kind of made a splash when it debuted. In a day where crossover movies with superheroes and even television series with that are commonplace, it's hard to remember that this used to be a risky idea. In fact, if anything tried to change the formula from how a superhero movie accidentally worked, we got Spider-Man 3. And no one wanted a repeat of that. So for a long time, they played it safe. They took careful steps when building their franchises and made sure each solo vehicle got its own attention. Well, how do you make something bigger than that? How do you cross all of these big, well-developed identities and franchises into one? Well, see, so you put all of these wonderful, talented actors into the hands of the man who brought us Serenity. Yes, that was his other major film before this release and some people have never heard of it. This feature film was a love letter to the television series that was cancelled, one that also had a lot of strong people giving very strong performances, like Nathan Fillion, Alan Tudyk, and holy crap, look at this entire cast. Aren't they beautiful? Due to how well he did with this, and his reputation for being able to handle people who are very different, but making them come together in a very organic way, he was a natural choice for this Avengers Film? It's almost more than a film, because this changed the game. When it debuted, it was the number three top grossing film of all time. It still sits there to this day. Look how many billions of dollars he's made simply by handling his characters well and respecting each one of their personalities. And that's why I appreciate him as a sociologist, because he takes a group dynamics that are so hard to pin down, and he masterfully manipulates it into organic structure. It's, it's absolutely a wonder to watch. He understands why people working in tandem will be the absolute best they can be. And if you happen to have seen both of these films, and you're thinking, well, yeah, these are two major successes, what else do you have to offer from him? Much Ado About Nothing. If you are a fan of good Shakespeare adaptations, and you also happen to know quite a few people from Joss Whedon's work, this is going to be a treat for you. This is going to use classical Shakespeare language, so beware, it can be a little slow for some, but the emotions that come through, and the way that it's juxtapositioned, the old language with the modern setting, it's done in black and white, which was an odd choice, but actually added to the charm after a while. <sighs> It is a masterpiece, and totally unexpected. I actually found this at a Blockbuster this year. It was going out of business, but I'm thinking, wait a second, there's still Blockbusters in 2016? Who knew? So that is how Joss Whedon was winning at movies. And honestly, if he tried that venture again, I'm sure he'd succeed, because no matter where he goes, he seems to find success, even when he gets canceled. Guess what I'm talking about next. Take my love, take my land, take me where I cannot stand. As some people know, especially on the internet, Joss Whedon had a television show once. It was beautiful, and it was short-lived. It was a space western, what many people described Star Wars to be back when it first debuted. This had even more of a visceral tone, and it looked realistically at how the world would develop. Of the original season episodes, 
three were never aired on television during its initial run. It was considered cancelled and never going to be renewed. They even destroyed the set. So everything you see in Serenity, which is the follow-up to the series Firefly, they had to remake entirely just for that movie. But, you know, he is not one to be held down. He finished this series, and he learned his lesson when he went on to this. Ooh! In 2008, many years after they'd canceled Firefly, Fox approached Joss Whedon once again, saying, Hey, we need a TV series, and, and I think we can give you another chance. And he said, you know, I'm going to take you another chance, and I'm going to hedge my bets. He created Dollhouse, and he also created the perfect escape plan so he wouldn't have to go through the Serenity debacle again. Notice I'm only holding two seasons because this is the entire run of Dollhouse. But within these DVD sets, you will see the final episode of the series. I'm not, no, no, not, not, the second, not, not the second season finale, the series finale. Spread across two seasons, yes. He was definitely prepared this time. The story follows a group of dolls, as they call them, people who can get their memory wiped and reprogrammed to be entirely new people, all at the flip of a switch. It's mostly used for the purposes escorts are, but at the same time, the potential for way more is there. And the best part? Joss planned that. The first season is a total... To I'm not going to say total mislead, but... It slow plays beautifully, and by the time it starts to reveal its hand and show you what's really going on, you go, yes, I want more. And of course, after second season, it got cancelled. Just because that's the way Fox likes to roll with Joss. Here's hoping that the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. treats him better. So far it has. Yes, he's still making TV shows, and yes, they are still awesome. Does he stop there, though? Ha 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 ha! I think not. During the writer's strike, which struck a lot of television shows a hard blow, and some of them it even killed, Joss looked at another project, something that had been written by a few friends of his, and he thought, this is worth my time and investment. Let's grab Neil Patrick Harris, uh, Felicia Day, Nathan Fillion, get together, and make an internet phenomenon. Oh my goodness. This is one of the most fun trips I've had in a long time. When I first heard about it, I thought, this sounds so dumb. Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. That is the worst concept I've ever heard, just from the title alone. This actually made him more money than what he made directing the Avengers. That is pure fandom and obsession that drove those sales. It's available for free online. For, for free. He has given so much in the realm of entertainment, and he actually gave a much more substantial amount than I'm even mentioning. There's this little show that aired at the end of the 90s and into the 2000s you may have heard of, as well as a spin-off from it, but we'll touch base on those later. Whether it be in film, in television, or even on the internet, even in the comic medium, he has won an Eisner before for a one-shot he made for Dark Horse. The man can do anything. He can write it, and he can make it real for us. And that's the real power of it. He understands the group dynamics better than most anyone else in the business today. He can take so many strong personalities and not have them be in an awkward, standoffish way, but actually interact like human beings. Because the man knows what he's doing, and he knows that if you want to engage the audience in a way that's going to last more than just one or two you know, bowls of popcorn, you're going to need to make them care. And that is his strength. I care about every single one of these characters that I have seen throughout all of these. That is an accomplishment, and that is why I'm sharing this with everyone. Go and watch any one of those. Dr. Horrible, you can watch right now, online, anywhere. It's free. If you've never seen anything by Joss, that's not a bad place to start. Now, it is literally 3.30 in the morning. I better finish wrapping these. Because Christmas is way too close. Let's see, that's Psycho. No, I'm not going to waste that one on Psycho. Um, that. I don't want to give that to Bacchus either. You know, 
this may just be my present this year.